Hello, everybody, to this episode of Scripture Snippets. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, why sometimes bad things happen, um, but really I want to talk about this is actually about the discipline of the Lord. Um, we have a tendency to forget sometimes that when when rough times come, when bad things happen, um, we have to examine ourselves. Uh, that should be one of the first things that we do, one of the first steps that we take. And Scripture talks about this very much. I know when bad things happen, sometimes the tendency is to uh, try to place blame uh, somewhere else. Uh, we we look at it, and uh, as Christians, sometimes we're very quick to blame Satan. We're very quick to blame the enemy. Uh, we And it very well could be. I don't want you to dismiss that issue. Uh, but when problems arise... We need to be examining why those problems have arisen. You know, and sometimes it's not the enemy, and sometimes it's not chastening, which I'm going to talk about today. Sometimes it's just the fact, like I mentioned in a couple devotionals before, uh, that God is allowing a certain adversity to happen in our life, because number one, he knows we're going to get through it, um, because he knows how strong we are. And number two, he knows that uh, because we'll experience it, we'll be able to help others in the future. I've already talked about that one. Um, I'll talk again a little bit more about when Satan attacks us as well. I'm going to go into that because he certainly does. Uh, Satan is active in today's world. Um, Christians have a tendency to step away from talking about things like Satan and hell. Uh, They look at it as some type of mystical mumbo-jumbo, uh, but it's not. Uh, Satan is very much a real enemy. Uh, the dev- uh, the Bible talks about how the devil uh, is not in hell. You know, many of us uh, try to give, we fall into that false perspective and that false narrative uh, that's been done through ancient lore and through stories of old and things like that where we see, uh, you know, the horned devil with the pitchfork tail uh, residing uh, in a kingdom uh, of that's called hell. Um, hell is prepared for Satan and his angels, the for for the fallen ones. Uh, but it's not their abode. Uh, that is definitely not their abode. In fact, Scripture tells us uh, that they walk among us. Uh, the Book of Job is very specific among that because God actually. Uh, it says he asked Satan. Uh, I think actual the terminology in the Hebrew was demanded, uh, demanded that he state where he come from, and uh, Satan said that he was walking to and fro on the earth. And then again in the New Testament, um, we learn that uh, he is seeking uh, to whom he may devour. Um, so we see that. Um, He's very much active. Uh, but when bad things happen to us, when, when, when horrible and bad things happen, uh, we need to sit back because one of the things, the, one of the reasons why it may be happening is because our Heavenly Father is disciplining, disciplining us. He's chastening us. Uh, it's a form of discipline. Uh, that's why whenever bad things happen, we need to examine ourselves. We need to look back and say, Okay, what is this? Why is this happening to me? Uh, How am I going to go through it? And you need to look at the positive of it in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's read from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 through 11. For beginning in verse 6, it says, and this is a quote from the Old Testament, but he's bringing it back up. It says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Okay, chastening, of course, is disciplining for those that don't know. He, he's, he's breaking out the whipping stick, so to speak. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. And scourging is whipping. That was part of, of, of that in there, too. So it's like a father whipping his child, uh, breaking out the whipping stick and, and paddling his son. So it says, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. So see, whenever this happens, we actually need to rejoice because it should remind us that we're children of God, that he loves us so much that he looks at us as a child. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. God's bringing up, in this point of Scripture, he's bringing up the fact that true fathers, true parents, but true fathers in themselves, which fathers out there, I encourage you to do this, true fathers 
show that they love their children by correcting their children because they don't want their children to be unsuccessful in their life and they don't want their children to further go through pain and they want the best for their child and part of that is correcting them. They see their child heading down a wrong road so they correct them and put them back on the right road. Uh, they teach them a discipline. To, to discipline your child and just like Jesus is, what was Jesus' followers called? Disciples. And that's part of the word discipline because the disciples were disciplined to walk in the correct way, to walk the narrow way. And it's the same with us. When we fall under the chastening of God, he's just correcting us and putting us back on the right road to where we may have wandered off, where we may have started living a sinful lifestyle and God is now correcting us and putting us back on the right on, on the right road. It says furthermore in verse 9 furthermore we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? We it's part of showing God the respect because it shows that he loves us but it also shows that he is our commander he is our king he is our father verse 10 for they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them but he for our profit god is only doing this for the best of you so whenever hard times come your way and you uh, instead of a woe is me attitude go to god just like uh, David did in Psalm 51. And if you read Psalm 51 closely, David's pouring his heart out in repentance. And yes, he's reminded of the pain, but David is actually praising God. He's actually thanking him, saying, Lord, thank you. You're righteous in your judgment. And you know what David knew? David knew God's judgment. Nathan had already pronounced God's judgment for his sin to him. His sons were going to be battling against him. His wives were going to be leaving him. I mean, uh, were, were, were going to be taken into captivity. It said that his sons would be in it enmity against him, which they were. Absalom would later on rebel against his own father. Um, and then it said that he would constantly be in war. And he was until until David passed away. Israel was in a constant state of war. But at the same time, while David knew this, he knew that his God was chastening, was correcting him, was giving an example, which is still here today, because I wouldn't be talking about the example of David if God had not acted in such a way. So see, we, whenever those things happen, we need to rejoice because God is doing it for our profit. Again, in verse 10, that we may be partakers of his holiness, because it corrects us and it holies us, it sets us apart, it sanctifies us. Verse 11, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present. Ain't that the truth? It's not a joyful thing. We hate it. And, and so see, I love it when people people sit there and they try to say that the Bible is not realistic. The Bible is absolutely realistic. Because look what it says there. It just tells you the truth. It's being, it's being truthful with you. It's saying, now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present. And that's true. It's The Bible's just reminding us, saying, listen, we know you're not going to like this thing. Ch no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. It eventually brings us peace. It brings us joy and it brings us closer to our God. So my friends, for those today that are going through a chastening time, those today that are going through a hard time, examine yourself and see if it's the chastening of God. Have you disobeyed God? Is there something you need to correct in your life? Now, Christian, you need to understand that disobedience comes in many ways, shapes, and forms. We have a tendency to think that God will only chasten those who may be caught up in theft or... or lying or something else but we have to understand that it goes even deeper than that how's your prayer life god will chasten you over your prayer life how's your bible study god will chasten you over your bible study how's your faithfulness and tithing yeah he will chasten you over that as well just like a father he will dole out punishment 
the way he sees fit. But again, it's to discipline you. It's to put you on a right path to glorify him. And not only that, though, but to give you peaceable fruit so you'll be on the right road and you will have that abundant life like Jesus talked about. So, Christian, take a look at yourself. Take a look at your life and see and ask, is the through right now, is it cause, Is it something that God... Number one, realize that if you're a Christian, God is doing it for your benefit no matter what. Number two... Ask yourself, is this this chastening of God? Is there something in my life I need to correct correct and repent of? And do that. It doesn't hurt to do that. Even if it's not necessarily a chastening, it's not always a good thing for you to examine your life. So Christian, have a great day. Thank God that he loves you, that he's willing to chasten you as a child. I love you. I bless you. Uh, Like and subscribe. Again, to the YouTube channel, Scripture Snippets. Uh, We're on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and we are officially on iTunes now. So please like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Please share this message, and I hope it really does bring you joy. I love you, friends, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.